A few years ago, people believed that fully autonomous cars were on the horizon. They're not. It'll be years before you can buy one. In my opinion, GM's Super Cruise is the best semi-autonomous system available, a true hands-free level 2 system. Ford's now rolling out the similar Blue Cruise. At Toyota's North American headquarters in Plano, Texas, Lexus was showing off Teammate that debuts on the Lexus LS 500H Hybrid. It's a hands-free driving system using cameras, radar, and LiDAR in combination with high-resolution map data. Like Super Cruise and Blue Cruise, it's intended for highway use only, but Teammate is different. I was lucky enough to snag Paul Williamson, product education manager at Lexus College, who's offering up a high-resolution explanation of how Teammate works. While I'm editing this for time, there are a lot of nuances, so I'm going to let Paul go into a lot of details so you have the best idea of how Teammate works. This is a prototype of a 22 model year LS500 hybrid uh -huh. to which the teammate functions have been added. So um, it's got various sensors that have been added to it, but these four actually are already in every LS. Uh -huh. You've got a stereo camera, you've got a telescopic camera, you've sure. got a short range camera, yeah. and then there's a daylight sensor for the climate control. Okay. A lot going on up there behind the rearview mirror. Okay. The radar sensor is standard on every LS as part of the radar cruise control, right. but the camera is new. So the camera is for, for both automated driving and also for parking. And the LiDAR is unique to the advanced drive function. Sure. Okay. And somebody told me that they're not sure whether or not those sensors on the side will be exposed in the production vehicle. Right. The, this prototype, that definition still hasn't been determined. So this car is not using them. We know that. Uh -huh. um, and we don't know whether they will be used or not used, covered, not covered. We don't know that. Okay. We'll figure that out. So that's basically it on the outside. All okay. Right. So let's hop in. You know, you're used to uh, dynamic cruise control systems. Right. Um, ours, probably like many others, we use a button like this to turn the system on. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a set and a resume, sure. right, which is also your minus and plus. What's different in this car, the steering wheel's the same on a LS500 hybrid with teammate and without, uh -huh. but the functions are different. And so you'll notice it says radar ready. The radar cruise is always on. You don't have to turn it on. Okay. Instead, this button, normally which would turn on radar cruise, mm. this is used to enable advanced drive. Okay. So we're going to start driving. Anytime we want to, we could set the cruise control just by hitting set. We don't have to hit the power on first. Okay. But we're not going to do that. What we're going to do instead is get into a position centered in the lane at a good steady highway speed, uh -huh. and the system will detect that, and it will offer advanced drive available. Okay. When it says advanced drive available here, and it'll say it in the head-up display, which you can't see and is right. impossible to film. Yeah. <laughs> Trust but, me, I know that. You know, but it'll say advanced drive available in both, uh -huh. and if I see either one and press this or this, we're in advanced drive. Okay. Now, our advanced drive is a little different from some automakers. It has sort of two modes. One mode is hands-free. The other, once the driver's fingertips on the wheel, you don't have to grasp it, you don't have to move it, but it wants to know, for some reason, conditions, it wants to know the driver's here. Okay, now does that set automatically in conditions that are a little bit more dicey, like rain or snow? Or um, do you select that mode? No, the, the vehicle decides when it wants you to have your fingertips on the wheel. Okay. So, so advanced drive will shift between those two modes every couple of hundred meters as conditions change. If we had a long enough, straight enough stretch, you could go hands-free for 100 miles, yeah. but, but we don't have the time to do that this morning. So what you'll find is that it will change between the two modes. And the, the key thing that you'll notice as a driver is this display will change noticeably when advanced drive is enabled, uh -huh. and it'll be sort of monochrome, gray. But when it goes to vivid blue, that's hands-free. That's your sign that you can take your hands off the wheel. So it operates on high definition mapped highways. Okay. So we're getting high definition mapping data from a number of suppliers, okay. TomTom Tom and several others, mm -hmm. merging it all together, filtering the duplicates and redundancies. We're using that high definition mapping to know not only where the road goes, but where each lane is, where each exit starts and stops. Uh -huh. Nav doesn't need that, but yeah. high definition mapping is required for advanced drive. Um, the LiDAR, the radar and the cameras all work together looking for other obstacles on the road, other vehicles, other targets, as the engineers call them, right? 
And so we want to know where those targets are and where they're going and whether they're a threat or not. So I'm going to merge on here. Uh, we find the system uh, is more likely to give you hands-free when you're not in the lane next to where people are getting on and exiting. Now the system, I haven't told it my destination. It doesn't know where I'm going, right? Uh -huh. So it, it will offer me as much support as it can without actually knowing what my destination is. Now we'll set a destination later and you'll see how it can act differently when it knows where I want to go. Okay. And this is an interesting point. You know, we've learned a decade ago, you know, many customers never, ever, ever program their home as a destination and don't use it on a daily basis. But if you don't tell the nav system you're going home, it can't reroute you around traffic. Sure. Right? The nav's got the capability to do that, but only if it knows you're going home, yeah. right? Or going to your office, as it were, right? Yeah. So um, whenever I'm interacting directly with a, a real customer, that's one of the things I always tell them is, you know, please save your home, save your office as destination favorite number two, and use them. Because then the nav system can look at the satellite nav traffic, and it can route you in a better way than you would on your own. I can see in the multi-information display, it says vehicle position initializing. That means it's detected I'm on a limited access road. Uh -huh. It's detected that I'm at a steady speed, and we are now hands-free. All right. So you can see that it's bright blue, but now it wants my fingers on the wheel. And why is that? If you look ahead of you, you can only see a couple hundred yards. But maybe this vehicle at this speed would rather see a couple hundred plus 20 yards. Okay. So now we're back to hands-free. Okay. Now it says, okay, I can see far enough. I'm okay. There's no exit. And it shows all of the cars that are around you. It does. And it even has a special indication for what it thinks is a commercial truck. Now in the head-up display, it only shows the one car ahead of me uh -huh. that it's tracking. And now we're hands-free. Now, I'll mention one other sensor, not on the outside, but on the inside of the car, and that is this. This is the driver attention sensor. That's the babysitter. Yes, it's a very, it's a very low res mapping of the driver's face, primarily looking at the bridge of the nose and the pupils. What it wants to know is, am I looking where the car thinks I ought to be looking? If I'm talking to you like this, yeah. after a few seconds, yeah. it's going to beep, and it's going to say, please, eyes ahead. But yeah. That was about eight seconds, right? And right. it didn't have a problem with that. That's normal conversation. Normal conversation. But if I'm going on and I'm kind of wordy and we get low in a while, then eventually it'll beep like there or driver's face not detected. Okay. So it wanted me to both look forward and touch the wheel momentarily, and now we're back to hands-free. Okay. Except that I looked away there. So you see this gray, this is not hands-free. Okay. And now it's hands-free. Okay. When the steering wheel icon is actually on. Yep. Then i got to have hands on the wheel. Okay. And again, it could have to do with shadow under the bridge, the curves, whatever. It just, it would like the extra support of knowing I'm here. Yeah. This again comes back to the teammate concept of the car and the driver working together, right? The car and the driver are helping each other. The car is not taken over. The car is not operating. It's just supporting the driver. Right. And there are some times when it knows it doesn't need much support from the driver and we can go hands-free. Yeah, but and all of the systems that are out today are truly that way. It's just that a lot of people have misconstrued that thinking that they're full self-driving and I can climb into the back seat if I gain the system a little I, bit. I think there are uh, some companies that are not as careful in their communications as they ought to be about that. Yeah. Uh, we want I wonder to be very who that careful. is. Yes, we want to be very careful <laughs> and make sure that we're clear. This is a support system. Right. The car and the driver are teammates. You know, you think like a rally car, right? You got a driver and you got a navigator. You, you can't do the rally without both of them working together. They got to communicate. And so, so we're, we're trying to add that support, that communication, uh, but do it in a way that doesn't increase the driver's burden, but rather reduces it. Now, what if I wanted to change a lane? Perfect. So um, we'll do that up ahead. This system is, the system is also fairly conservative in our, our engineering constraints. So um, it's capable of doing an automatic lane change when the driver wants to. It's capable of suggesting an automatic lane change when the system knows my route and thinks it's appropriate, okay. or if there's a slow vehicle and it's going to offer me the chance to pass that. Um, but it doesn't like to do those automated lane changes anywhere close to an exit. Because again, an exit is a huge number of variables. 
Right. You don't, we can't see what's on the other side of this wall. Right. There's no way the car can tell what's there. Now we can see it, right? And it's where all the action is. Right. Because people are coming speeds. in and out. People right. are moving over to let people in. Right. So what I'll do is just past the final point of the El Dorado Parkway exit, um, I'll tell the car I'd like to do a lane change. And if I do it correctly, it will acknowledge my request and it will then do an automated lane change. So I'm going to tell it I want a lane change by holding this up only to the first detent and only until the system acknowledges that I've done that by giving one beep. At that point, if the conditions are right, nobody's on my right side, yeah. the, the LS will do a lane change, but before it does lane change, it will insist that I look in that mirror. Oh, seriously? Yeah. So it'll say, check blind spot. And I got to know that check blind spot means if I'm shifting to the left, look at this mirror. If I'm shifting to the right, look at that mirror. So I'm going to do it now. I'm going to ask for lane change. Okay, now it's doing the lane change. Right lane change starting. The vehicle is doing this lane change, not me. I'm just fingertips on the wheel. It did the signaling. I didn't do the signaling. I only hold, held it for a momentary three click, but it signaled all the way through the lane change. Okay. So that was an automated lane change. And we're back to hands free once we complete the lane change. So when you do the lane change, does it want your hand, your fingertips on the wheel? Yep, fingers on the wheel. So, so it needs driver input in two senses. One, it's got to see my eyes turn towards the mirror. It's not actually looking at the mirror, so it's not bothered by the GoPro, right? And two, it wants fingers on the wheel during the lane change, just in case something happens during the lane change. Now, I'm going to surprise the car right now. I'm going to suddenly exit at this off-ramp. It has no way of knowing I'm going to do that. Yeah. It doesn't know where I'm trying to go. But it's going to very quickly figure out he's not on the limited access highway anymore. Man. So it says take manual control, which means I've got to touch the brakes or the gas pedal okay. and hold the wheel. And now I'm back in charge. If I didn't touch the brakes or the gas pedal, it would slow us all the way down to about 10 miles an hour. It's not going to let me go charging onto this access road at highway speed. Okay. So, so when it slows down a little bit, I just touch the accelerator, then I'm back in full control. Okay. So, so uh, question. Yeah. What if I become incapacitated and uh, let's say I'm not going to have a heart attack, but I fall into a deep, deep, deep sleep. What will the car do if it's in advance mode? So that's the third component of teammate besides advanced drive and advanced park. The third component is incapacitated driver detection. Um, we're not demonstrating that this week, obviously. Yeah. Uh, this isn't the right environment for that. But in, it, in the event it detects an incapacitated driver, uh, it will slow down, it will change to the rightmost lane as it can safely do so, and it will come to a complete stop. And since this vehicle is our top line flagship, it's equipped with a concierge facility, so it will place an emergency phone call. Ah, okay. Now right now, the MID knows my destination. I've told it I'm going back to TMNA, and it now says advanced drive will be available in one tenth of a mile, in zero miles because it knows my route and it says, oh, on this route, yeah, we can do it. So again, once I get into a lane at a steady speed, centered in the lane, uh, it's preparing to offer me advanced drive. So that's a difference when I have a destination set versus than when I don't. And it's, it's a lot more proactive. It will enter advanced drive activated earlier than if right. you're just driving. Right, because it's it's not just looking at where I'm going. It's yeah. it's this initializing is also looking at satellite nav traffic miles ahead. Uh -huh. It's it's looking at a lot of information. So initializing kind of a short word, but but there's a lot that's going on when it's initializing. Okay. So it's it's looking at my route, it's thinking, "Oh, wait a minute. If he wants to get off the next exit, we're not going to do this." Right? But but in fact, my exit's not for 5 miles. So right now, you can see here it says 1.8 and 5.7, the rest of that is in 1.7 miles, it's going to encourage me to change lanes to the right uh -huh. because about four miles after that, I'm going to take an exit. And we don't want to let the driver be hanging out until the last quarter mile to try to fight to get the lane change. So again, the system's conservative. Beginning four miles before an exit, it will encourage me to go to the right lane. Okay. It won't do that automatically. It will offer the lane change. Okay. And if I acknowledge it by looking at the blind spot, it'll do it automatically. Okay. Do you have to touch the Got to touch the wheel. No. Because, no, no. no. again, that's a lane change it knows it wants to do. So it will offer the lane change. It'll do the signaling. All I have to do is when it offers the lane change, I just have to look at the blind spot when it says so, and yeah. it'll do the lane change. Okay. 
So we're, we're hands-free, our cruise speed is set, and we're just motoring along with traffic. Now, um, so it says now in six tenths of a mile, it's going to do that lane change. Right. So let's, let's run it out and see what happens in six tenths of a mile. Okay. What if there's an obstacle in the road? Right. So all that detection is always working. So, sure. so the primary, uh, the, the, the preferred, uh, is going to be to slow down in this lane. Um, and basically, any obstacle in the road, this vehicle is going to detect it far enough in advance. It, it's going to be able to slow down the lane and avoid hitting it. Um, okay, it says in 100 feet, it's going off the lane change. It says check the blind spot, which I've done. Right lane change starting. And it's going to do the lane change. So the vehicle is now signaling, changing, doing everything. And my only action was to look at the blind spot when it told me to. And now we're back to hands free. And touch the wheel. And touch the wheel. So again, to your point about an obstacle in the road, it, you know, it's going to slow this vehicle down. At some point, we hope the driver will then listen to all the beeps and see all the flashing lights, yeah. and he'll decide, well, maybe I should change left or right around that. We'd like the driver to make that choice. That, yeah. That'd be ideal. So it shows me we're going to exit in seven tenths of a mile. Uh -huh. It will take that exit just like it took the lane change, meaning it will tell me it's going to do it. To make sure I'm attentive, it'll ask me to check the blind spot. Even though it's an exit, there's nothing in the blind spot, but it's going to ask me to check anyway. Sure. And it's going to ask me to keep the fingertips on the wheel, and it will signal, and it'll do the lane change to the exit. Now, immediately before our exit, there's two other exits in very fast succession, so traffic always bottles up here. So that's why it wants fingertips on the wheel right now. If there was no one here... Advanced drive will keep right ahead. Just letting me know that we've got our exit in a tenth of a mile. And you weren't braking. I didn't that. do anything. Okay. I didn't do anything. Just And it's hands-free now. Now that we're out of that congestion, it's gone back to hands-free. So that's where I would go to go to my parking lot at headquarters, but we're going to take this and show you a different experience. It, I'm checking the blind spot now, and it put the signal on, and the vehicle is now steering into the exit lane, and the vehicle is taking the exit on its own just with fingertips on the wheel. And that's just to signal to the system that you're aware of I'm what's here. going on. Yeah. Because again, one of these drivers ahead of us or behind us could do something where it might be appropriate for me to take evasive action and, and the only way I can do that is if my hands are already on the wheel, not in my lap or doing something else. We drove for quite a while. Again, this is edited, but still gives a detailed view of teammate. I drove the same route that Paul did, but showing that would waste your time. My takeaway? Teammate works well and reduces driving fatigue. It's more comprehensive than the latest Super Cruise, especially with the advanced graphics that were hard for you to see, but it's more conservative about wanting hands on the wheel, and there's a higher learning curve with the Lexus system. Super Cruise is super easy to master. Once Teammate is in production form, I'll get my hands on one so I can take my hands off it and do a thorough test. Special thanks to Paul Williamson and the folks at Toyota and Lexus that invited me to this event in Plano, Texas. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.